Hello, Bible readers. What is Revelation? Well, in the last post, I talked about the first thing that it most certainly is, and that's the last book of the Bible, which speaks to a claim Bible readers can make that although the Bible is certainly 66 books, a library of books written with stories spreading across thousands of years from myriad authors and theological understandings, despite all that, the Bible somehow functions as a singular narrative drama, a drama in five acts, as Professor Eugene Boring says. The first act is creation. That comes from the book of Genesis. The second act is covenant, made in Exodus and then kept throughout the Old Testament. That's a long act. Act three is Christ, spoken of in the Gospels. And Jesus, of course, makes space for a community. That's act four, the church, which is the book of Acts through the rest of the New Testament, up until act five, the final act, which Boring calls consummation, when God brings history to a worthy conclusion and fully reigns with in creation. So Revelation, the last book of the Bible, provides the vision for the last act, the fifth act. So if anybody asks what you've learned in these first couple days of our Bible readers Bible study of Revelation, you can say, well, that it's the last book of the Bible. Profound. They'll be so impressed, and you're welcome. This is the kind of hidden gem knowledge you just can't get anywhere else. So the next thing Revelation is, though, is a pastoral letter written to first century Christians in Asia in crisis. There's a lot to unpack there. So let me start by stating another pretty obvious claim. It's not like John of Patmos, the author of this letter, sat down to write the last book of the Bible. That is not what he's thinking. Although it became the last book of the Bible, he wrote this letter out of pastoral responsibility. He's writing it for Christians he obviously knows already. Oh, and that's another important point. This is not the kind of letter intended for private, silent consumption by a leader as he or she sits next to the fire some evening. This is the kind of letter intended for group consumption. It's obviously meant to be read aloud. You can just feel that from the oratorical devices in it where similar or the exact same phrases are repeated time and again. It feels liturgical in many spots. But there's lots of genres of writing that can do this. A book, if I were to write a memoir of my own life, for example, I would write it for whoever might stumble into it. I'd write it for the general public, many, maybe most of whom I would not already know personally, right? So like Stephen King does not personally know all his readers, and yet he writes books for the public. Revelation isn't like that. What distinguishes a real letter from a book or a gospel is that the, the author and the readers are particular people, which leads the writer to speak specifically address particular circumstances of those people. So if I were to write a letter to a church that I served 15 years ago, I'd likely include some specific references to particular things that happened there or are true there. Which leads me to say this, and this is a pretty important thing to understand about Revelation, to really believe about Revelation. If Revelation was a letter that had these seven particular churches in mind as recipients. If it is not written for the public at large, like Stephen King writes books, if it was written to specific Christians in a specific place, time, and situation, then it was not written to us. Boring makes this point that just as Paul's first letter to the Corinthians was not written to us, so John's letter to the seven churches of Asia, Asia was not written to us. If we do think Revelation has codes or symbols or hidden messages or something that are intended to be decoded and understood only once the world got to the 20th century or the 21st century, then we will misunderstand this letter. To understand Revelation, we're going to have to do 
the work of understanding the circumstances of the original communities who heard it or read it. Which leads me back to the rest of what I wanted to get at today. Revelation is a pastoral letter written to first century Christians in Asia in crisis. In Asia. It's not the Asia you're thinking of. I didn't go down this rabbit hole yet to find out more about the history of this word Asia, but when John refers to the seven churches in Asia, he is not talking about the world's largest continent. Asia is simply the name of a Roman province, one of many Roman provinces. Remember, Rome is the empire of the day. They've conquered nearly all the known world in the West. And in what is now Turkey, across the Aegean Sea, across from Greece, there are provinces of Rome called Mysia, Lydia, Phrygia, Asia. Paul himself and his co-workers had established churches in Asia in the 50s which means Paul's kind of Christianity, which we can be quite familiar with through lots of what is the New Testament, that kind of Christianity is what John, the author of Revelation, inherits in the 90s. Ephesus itself is named as one of the seven churches to receive this Revelation letter. Well, Ephesus was a central spot for Paul's ministry. Okay, so a little more history and geography. I promise it matters. If you didn't know, there was a catastrophic war in the Holy Land between the Romans, the occupying empire, and Jews from 66 to 70. Okay, so that would be 35 years after Jesus is resurrected, 25 years before Revelation is written. Okay, so like most wars... That one creates lots of refugees. Asia becomes one of the places that Jews and Jewish Christians end up who escape the Holy Land. And that's when things become more complicated for everybody. See, before the war and displacement from home, Jewish Christians understood themselves and were understood by Roman authorities and were understood even by Jews as Jews. The Jewish community still included these Christians because ethnically they were them. But Judaism, of course, is about the law, remember? So if you're a Jew who believes in Jesus, who said he fulfilled the law, are you still Jewish? Until this war, few were really asking these questions. But as the refugees scramble out of town and churches in places like Asia start receiving people, all the questions start rising to the surface. Who is a Jew, really? And how connected should we ethnic Jews remain to the Jewish powers and authorities that aren't Christian, that aren't following Jesus? And at the same time, this is also a generation the Christians, who are seeing the deaths of their apostolic leaders. So the first generation of Jesus followers are dying. So what does that mean? You know, do we, the church, set up an alternative authority structure to the Jewish one? Alternative to Rome, for sure, but how alternative should our authority structure be when being contrary to Rome at all gets you killed. What does it mean to be Christian? How extreme do we go to try to follow Jesus as Lord in this time, in this place? So references I'm not going to bore you with tell us this time that Revelation is written is 96. The author is John, a Christian prophet. I'm going to say more about that tomorrow or in the next post. And he's writing to churches he knows should expect to face terrible persecutions from Rome who, although they've allowed special room for Jews to worship God, Rome does not see Christians. They don't see Christians in the same way. Once the rift happens between Jews and Christians, the Christians are standing outside the safety of the understanding that Rome had for Judaism. So Christians are typically lower class workers without a history or institutions who met in homes on a day that was not a public holiday. They're strange. They were suspected of being unpatriotic. Wild stories are told about their cannibalism. 
as they eat the body and drink the blood of their God. They knew social and economic discrimination, plenty of harassment, sometimes even violence. The pressures of their situation forced them to ask in this moment when John writes Revelation, who are we? So tomorrow, part three of what is Revelation, I'll get into what it means that John is a Christian prophet who uses apocalyptic language and imagery. Again, all of this is, it's just crucial to grasp before we dive into the actual letter. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.